Mabira Forest, Uganda's second largest natural forest, lies at the margins of Buikwe and Jinja district across the rustic sugar belt. Previously, it was composed of the sprawling 300 km of tightly knit trees, tethered to the roots that hug the bowels of the earth. In this enclosed shelter, the Mabira habitat embraced the Colobus monkey, the chatting birds and insects that spread their wings across blades of grass and leaves like the caterpillar. A sacred place for decades, Mabira served up for clotels and flora, harvested as natural medicine, was used to treat ailments. The forest also provided reliable rainfall. Today, the locals are nostalgic of the past as rains are unpredictable and with the ravaging effects of climate change, the harvest in their gardens continues to dwindle. Like a festering wound, Mavira's trees continue to rapidly diminish even after NTV's panorama film revealed the scale of widespread illicit logging in February 2018, an expose that elicited an uproar. As the orange sun majestically sets across the horizon in the evening, dust gradually envelops the humble hamlet, turning the ferocious skies into a pitch black ball. It is 4.30 a.m. and we are already in Mavira Forest to start our day. Five years later, we have returned to Mavira Forest to find out if government took any steps to ensure that they stop these activities. I think from this point, we just need to switch off the lights so that we are safe because the moment we reach deep inside, it is going to expose us to any people who are inside this forest doing their illegal business. Alongside my cameraman, we trudged through this narrow path used by loggers at Nagoje Waswa, a settlement in the middle of the forest. With dim light, we often strayed into the wrong path. One of us is just moving around, especially the one of us over the corners in this forest, to see if he can uh, find a route again. But we have to just do all this before, before daybreak, because if that doesn't happen, then that means the entire day will be wasted. But we are able to claw back often by sheer luck. Here the first signs of recent logging emerged. The large tree stumps bear the scent of being recently cut. This is in stark contrast with the tree stumps in other areas which are dying indicating that logging may not be recent. As the hues of light flicker through the canopy of trees at the crack of dawn, our feet are washed by the morning dew shaking off sleep which ushers in a new day. After traversing the forest for about two hours, we finally landed on this part where the loggers are expected to be coming later on in the day because there are so many signs that indicate that they will be coming. William Chindu, my camera person covered in grass to disguise his movements, moved closer in anticipation that the loggers will return and commence their illicit activities. It is visible that the loggers had been here a few days ago. Unrestrained and perhaps aided by the complicity of authorities, the illicit loggers will soon return to... The loggers are wasteful and often abandoned trees that are not deemed good for timber. Such big trees are a sanctuary for monkeys. Unfortunately, by 6 p.m. they didn't show up. We understand today they didn't work because of rain and so 10 p.m. in the night, we are going to get out of the forest and then come back very early in the morning at maybe 4 a.m. A few minutes past 5 a.m., we laid our trap with the camera lens wide open. However, the illicit loggers did not turn up. The loggers have built a network of loyal spies across the grassroots was sustained by this lucrative trade in illicit timber. As doubts lingered, I perhaps wondered whether the loggers, who have a strong sense of smell, 
discovered a fresh scent or discovered new footprints that may have raised suspicion. You can even grow bananas or put a garden here and the crops will grow just because the entire cover has been wiped away. When you see this tree, it is among the small ones that uh, people who cut firewood normally target. They go for such a smaller size. They throw it down and then later on come and uh, cut it into small or short logs that they load on trucks and take to the other parts of the area. But the destruction in this forest is quite alarming, especially when you go deep inside, that's when you realize that so much has been happening in the face of so many government agencies that are charged with protecting the environment and ensuring that such things don't happen, but they happen. We agreed to change location to another backwater at Chinoni Gang, near Nagoje Market. Across this part of the forest, the illicit activity taking place is Chakobani. Trailing footprints and sounds, we located this man involved in Chakobani. He is not bothered that he may be caught as he conducts his illegal activities from dusk till dawn making his way out of the forest at about 6.30 in the morning. He's done basically with what he was doing, that making sure that he covers all the logs that he put under here to burn charcoal. When you look around this place, it's like they have taken over. They move from one side until they stretch down, clearing all the trees. And this is just basically because the community that is nearby here in Mawira, that is in Ajembe and other areas, they entirely depend on Chaco every day. These guys are not about to stop. Reason? There is nobody who is stopping them. A scent of fresh ash and unburnt pieces of wood from the Chaco pile permeate across a large section of this forest. The loggers have turned these empty spaces that once hosted trees into their marijuana gardens. We have been told that one mature tree can fetch up to 10,000 shillings. Inside the deeper recesses, we found some of the trees that had been freshly cut. The loggers here use access to fell trees in a forest guarded by National Forest Authority personnel. It appears strange that the law enforcement officers cannot hear the third of the axe reverberating across the forest. Call them. The, the rangers ask them what is going on. They will tell you nothing probably remain working. So they get assurance from those above. But the NFA officials are a paltry number to be able to provide adequate security for this vast expanse. In another area, another Chakopana spends the day preparing logs and later lights a furnace, which burns for two days before the wood is carbonized. About 60 meters from here, we found a huge charcoal pile. All the trees and the trunks on the ground here have been cleared. The pile here is so big that the owners placed improvised supporters. They have opened one side of this heap so that a lot of air can enter for easy spread of fire. This whole huge thing is likely to fetch them about uh, 20 to 30 bags of charcoal. And you can see how heavily it is supported. And um, the bigger the size it is, the more the trees that are all inside here covered in soil, burning into charcoal. The following day, we were joined by a drone operator, Nelson Nwaha. Our mission was to use aerial filming to show the extent of this illicit logging. 
we repeated the routine and as usual, tried to reach early to avoid detection. Our intention is to capture the owners of the biggest charcoal pile about to make a harvest. As we got closer, one of the men who spent a night guarding the pile became suspicious. He noticed us before we took cover, so he asked whether we are looking for Chaco and he said, for we said yes, he said, I don't have Chaco. And that means under his bangers or the machetes were all positioned, ready to attack just in case of any encroachment or anybody who gets close to him. So we decided to withdraw and then plan and see how to get them when they are collecting the charcoal from where they are burning it. We hid not far from him. Shortly after dawn, we flew a drone to capture what was taking place. We heard them say that they had seen our drone fly above them. Some hid away. We quickly abandoned filming and dashed out of the forest for fear of being attacked. In this panic, we momentarily failed to locate our camera person Chindu and the local guide. Speaking through muted tones on the phones against the chipping sound of the birds, we were able to identify our locations. To avoid being predictable, we abandoned the route we usually took and opted to pass through a meandering stream. From a vantage point, we were able to film the Chaco dealers carrying spades headed for the forest. We remained hiding, and four hours later, they emerged with sacks of charcoal. These men only communicated through sign language to avoid being heard. This was a response from Stuart Mani Raguha who is the National Forestry Authority Director, Plantations and Development. Movement permits for charcoal burning, even for timber, are issued by district's local government. Now, these local governments are using actually forest products as their source of non-tax revenue. So the DFOs are actually assigned to give as many movement permits as possible to collect revenue for the local government. The following day, we moved to another area where illicit logging was taking place, called Kasokoso. At dawn, we hid in the tall grass and waited for the loggers. You take such a position for almost an entire day waiting for that breakthrough movement. But according to what we have understood from the sources, these guys are not going to show up, so we have to replan and then uh, move to another place, which is going to be tight because in most cases, we arrive ahead of them so that we prepare camouflage and then uh, do the filming. So let's see how this works out. We then moved to another location in the same section of the forest. We found many spots where trees were recently felled for logs in Chakobani. It is uh, threatening to rain and we are still moving. 
We are already past one hour into the movement inside. This offered the best chance for us to still three track the loggers. For another two hours, we remained on the trail of these loggers. The sound of a uh, handsaw crashing into the logs. At this vantage point, we were able to film the loggers cutting timber with handsaws. They did not seem bothered that they would be caught. The National Forestry Authority manager at Ranchima Zone next to Mavira declined to comment, claiming that he needed authorization from the head office in Kampala. I have moved in this forest for a week. I've never seen a soldier inside. They are here. They are in this bush, they are in this forest. Yeah. Your soldiers? They are here. Patrolling Mavira? Yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah. People ferry Chapo every day from this forest and not far from here. Every day, Chapo, Kim. They are untouchable. They do it during the broad daylight. So, as NFA, what are you doing about it? We have about eight forest supervisors. Just eight. Eight forest supervisors supported by patrolmen, about each, each having four patrolmen who are having sticks. Then you have about two to three policemen with guns to each of them. That cannot protect that forest. The pressure on it is high. Have we interrogated the population around the forest? Have we interrogated the population within the forest? What alternatives are we creating for all of these factories that are close to Mavira, that are using fewer wood? Where does this wood come from? I think we need to also interrogate that. The locals claim that these loggers report to their masters who connive with the NFA staff. They always beat the locals who cut the trees, but allow their own people inside. Sometimes they even use power saws, which locals can't easily access. Some fail to collaborate with the forestry staff, but have a rapport with soldiers guarding the forest. I was born in 1964. This forest used to be guarded by locals with machetes, and it was intact. But ever since they brought the army and police in the forest, illegal activities increased. They are actually failing on their mandate. Although the illicit loggers we exposed in 2018 were not apprehended, Mani Ragua told NTV that some of the NFA staff who connived with loggers were punished. And that has sent a signal to the other. We have non-tolerance to those issues. How come you want to only take disciplinary action against your staff and you're not using the law that you use against other citizens that you find depleting the forest? Actually, it would be now you people to say, can we look at the files of people who were dismissed? And then we take them home. They need to be accountable to all of the Ugandans, not only to NFA. So why don't you do that? No, we, we, that's why we're saying this should not be looked at as an NFA issue. We should all take responsibility and manage this forest together. On our final day inside the forest, we return to Kasokoso Zone. After cutting, we are told they know I carry it to some part of the community before trucks come and load them and then they are taken elsewhere. And so that's the mission which is our last day inside Mavira Forest. We were able to trace the fresh footprints of the loggers who had earlier on entered the forest. Heavy rains pounded this area at 6 a.m as we approach the outskirts of the forest. 
we hid near the banana and coffee plantation. It rained on us for like about two and a half or three hours. This one was just picked dry banana leaves. Not far from where we are hiding. Meaning he's going inside to use it as a base to carry the timber out. So we are waiting. When it ceased raining, the gladiatorial beasts of the jungle noticed strange footprints and unleashed hounds to track us. Dogs came as close as 10 meters from where we were hiding and failed to trace us. Perhaps the rains had washed away our scents. The illicit loggers brandished their sharp machetes in a mock exercise to instill fear amongst those trailing them. The other men who were part of the cartel gradually emerged out of the hiding place with timber. To ease transportation, they divide the logs into big chunks of wood, which are later transported to holding stores and later ferried using trucks or border borders. We could not follow the loggers up to their store as this seemed extremely dangerous. We however moved to the section near Griffin Falls next to Lugazi Sugar Plantation. Here, the loggers used one section of the broken bridge to transport the large timber logs. Some of the border borders transported the logs to Lugazi town. Timber business is booming in this bustling town of Lugazi. So the, the system changed. Now the main market is around Jinja. So from, from Lugazi around Buyukwe, or oh, any other way, where they get timber from Kayunga. The first market current is ginger, then from ginger, Kampala buyers get it from ginger. Using our own uh, intelligence, we were able to identify four illegal titles. There is a claim of over 5,000 acres. That's about eight square miles. Someone comes and claims 5,000 acres of the forest. The entire 300 kilometer stretch of Mabira Forest is guarded by only eight national forestry staff, operating with one pickup and about four armed police and UPDF soldiers. So ultimately they have no capacity to effectively uh, control in terms of patrolling and ground management. If you compare, uh, Uganda Wildlife Authority has 3,000 personnel with a budget of about 120 billion Uganda shillings. NFA has a budget of about uh, 20, about 26 billion thereabout, with uh, 400 or less staff, and you are managing almost the same area or even higher. So what needs to be done? Uh, the responsible agency for day-to-day -day management of all forests requires more support in terms of uh, personnel in terms of budget. Empower the local governments to protect their own forests instead of using people who are not from here. According to the Global Forest Watch, between 2000 and 2020, Uganda lost over 23% of its tree cover in both natural and planted forests and an average of 20.8 metric tons of greenhouse gas emissions was released into the atmosphere annually. Today, there is a nexus between the reduction of Uganda's forest cover to increase the accumulation of greenhouse gases that has escalated global warming and led to prolonged droughts and food insecurity in Uganda. Tree cover loss in Uganda is mainly attributed to rapid population growth, the need for land for settlement, and agriculture, urbanization, industrialization, illicit logging, and increased demand for solid biomass for fuel.
President Yuri Museveni, in one of his State of the Nation addresses, he said ever since the regime captured power in 1986, they have been concentrating mainly on security, protecting their borders and other threats, but they forgot about the environment. And thus he said that it is high time that the government redirects its efforts in ensuring that they protect the environment. Ministers, government officials have traveled all over the world to attend climate change conferences. And all this is aimed at finding solutions to global warming that is a threat to humankind. However, instead of taking a flight, take a drive to Mabira Forest, which is just about 45 minutes from Kampala, and see what is happening, then find the solutions, or else Mabira, one of the biggest rainforests, is in danger, and it's within a matter of time. It could be no more. Sudib Yarhanga, NTV, Mabira Forest.